so here we are at uh, Double Fjell, and this is actually your first time out, Björn. I've been I'm really excited to have you on board this trip here, and, uh, but I'm really curious how you as a landscape photographer are preparing to a kind of trip like this, because we are mainly going to photograph birds and uh, animals. So uh, yeah, how do you um, prepare yourself and uh, yeah, what, what, what are your steps? Well, first of all, uh, thanks for inviting me to come along. I, uh, that means a lot. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, I read a lot about the wildlife up here. Uh, there's many things to learn for me uh, about animal behavior. So I read a lot about the muskox, mainly about the muskox, not so much about birds. <laughs> and um, I quickly realized that I had to ask a lot of questions when we got here uh, about you three, which are quite experienced in photographing uh, wildlife. Me, uh, when I photograph wildlife, it's kind of more like a chance encounter. Like you're out on a hike and suddenly there's a moose and you get really excited and you, you photograph it. That's my, <laughs> that's my experience. But now up here we're, we're scouting for, for them and we find them and that's kind of what we will be photographing. But before we got here, uh, I thought I need to work on my strengths rather than try to emulate strengths that I, or, or uh, experience that I do not have. So I thought um, uh, to have more focus on uh, the, the landscape, and that sounds really stupid, but the, uh, the mountains behind, kind of the scene behind, and rather than force uh, my focus on the muskox, uh, I would much rather have them walk into my, my picture, and then there's a landscape picture with muskox instead mm. of a picture with muskox. Of course, I would like, in an ideal world, I would like to have both to show off, but mm. I would be a really happy man if uh, I had a beautiful picture of maybe Snöhetta, the mm. tallest peak around her, in the background, mm. beautiful light, and just a not so large musk muskox, but just muskox in the in the foreground. Mm. That would be perfect. Yeah. yeah. So <coughs> I know that you are preparing when you are going out to hike in a mountain to photograph like big mountains or lakes or seascape or the the preparation I'm guessing is a little bit different than it's now or is it much of the same? It is pretty much the same uh, equipment wise bec because I don't have a lot of option options. I mm. have invested in a small group of lenses mm. which I'm kind of restricted to yeah. but uh, my main tool yeah. Uh, I have figured out it's, it's mainly my legs, I think, to walk around in circle to find what suits me. Uh, not too close, of course, but to have this arc mm. that I uh, and not get too caught up with the animal itself, rather just to see. <laughs> this was very complicated. <laughs> no, but I actually know what you mean because uh, that is actually <clears throat> my thought of how can I learn from like bringing landscape photographer to this kind of trip and one thing is like to put the animals in a bigger picture and there I am not that good myself because I have these long lenses I am separating the background from the animal or the bird and trying to like getting the closest as possible and that is probably my style and and uh, but it could be a little single focus but how can I like put uh, a little bigger picture there? And therefore, it's so great to like pick your minds because you are maybe preparing in another way because you are not carry a 500 millimeter uh, nope. on top of the mountain. <laughs> you have a shorter range uh, in some of the occasion, and you are preparing to like, like you said, getting the animal more in the environment and walking around and finding the right composition there. And that what uh, uh, is what I find really hard because there are so many elements that needs to work together to get a, a good picture out of it and uh, yeah how how do you do that it's a good question and um, 
it's in an ideal world because I haven't gotten that picture yet. But you you see the lay of the land, you see mm. the background, the mountains, the lines going down, mm. and you work with that according to the sun. Mm. And so the light hits and creates maybe contrast in the background, some light areas, some mm. dark, mm. and then hopefully so an animal will walk into that. Thing is, it's easy to get carried away when you see wildlife, and I uh, I experience that myself when I see animals out uh, chance encounters, which I talked about. Mm. You get carried away, and you get very focused on the animal, and and you forget the rest. Mm. At least that's my experience. Mm. So many of my preparations I've done beforehand is mentally force myself to take a step back and not get to carry it away, but mm. just step back, see, all right, this is where they stand. Mm. This is what I got to work with. Mm. Where do I need to be? Yeah. And how far away do I have to be? And what yeah. lens can I choose from, which will give me that benefits? Yeah. And, and instead of uh, photographing with a very small focal, not focal, but uh, f-stop f yeah. aperture, yeah. Um, I, I tend to photograph at f11, 14, mm. in that range, to get mm. most of the scene in focus. Yeah. So muskox in the landscape rather than muskox with a, a hint of landscape in the background. Yeah. Yeah. That's my that's my goal. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Yeah. Fingers crossed. <laughs> so that's really really nice to hear and. Um, Okay, I thought to pick your brain a little bit there and maybe I can get some something out of it when we are up in the mountain. Because I know I've been to Dover many times before and I know the landscape there itself is breathtaking. It is. Uh, especially when uh, when there's covered with snow and the light is coming in perfectly and yeah, it creates almost like a postcard and uh, yeah, I would love to like have the animal in that kind of postcard though because I have many pictures of the mascots and right really in front there and up close. So yeah, it was good yeah, to pick, you, pick your brain. You have that now. Maybe you can take a step back. And yeah, yeah, correct. Get That's it good. The this, thing is, yeah. it's really cold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we arrived here, it was like minus 29, Nine. I yeah. guess. And uh, yeah, that's pretty, pretty cold. So uh, it can be a challenge that. Uh, with the cold and uh, yeah but uh, the, the good thing is that the the trees are covered with uh, all kinds of uh, frost. frost and mm -hmm. yeah so it's ah, so beautiful out there so I can't wait to explore and go up the mountain look for the mask and and see what we can offer at winter time but of first of all it was so great that you uh, would come with me and um, yeah I can learn something from you and uh, so nice. So if you haven't seen uh, Obion's video uh, channel, YouTube channel, go and check it out. It's really awesome. He's an awesome storyteller, and uh, yeah, I recommend that. I'll put a, put a link in the description. So thank you so much for having me, and uh, I already from picking your brain in the car up here and <laughs> have learned many things from both you, uh, Truls, and uh, Cliff. So. Thanks for having me. Yes, thank you.